frequently students come into this course with a background in microeconomics. That is, they have had a course in microeconomics and they understand the principles of supply and demand and how markets work. What we're going to find in macroeconomics is that sometimes there's a little bit of a difference between what happens in a specific market, say the market for tobacco or corn, and what happens to the economy overall when changes occur. I call this the paradox of macroeconomics. Let's take a look at it. Did you ever wish you could save more money? I know that for most of us, if we had a little more money in the bank, we'd be a little better off. And in fact, if we had a lot more money in the bank, we'd be a lot better off. And so, I don't know, I was raised with the sense that you should save part of every dollar that you ever earn. You should save it for emergencies or opportunities that may come along or big purchases. Uh, but saving was, was always taught to me as being a positive thing. How about you? We tend to celebrate when we have a lot of savings in the bank, don't we? Hoorah for us. We can save up and buy that new car we wanted or save up for the purchase of that home, perhaps. But think about what happens when everybody, everywhere, starts to save more of their money. Because that's a smart thing to do. They start to save more of their money so they can afford to buy the nice things they like without going into debt. What's going to happen if everybody starts saving more money, everybody on a large scale? What's going to happen next? If we all start saving money, what's going to happen to the idea that we spend money? I mean, we're used to malls full of people spending money. You and I get online and we buy things. Consumers, consumer spending, that's the engine that really drives our economy. Think about it. As long as we're all out there spending money, businesses are doing fine. And what do businesses do? They hire employees, and that's where our jobs come from. So a successful business is a result of you and me spending money unless we are saving money. And then what happens? If we start saving more money, what happens to businesses? They lose customers. If we save enough on a large enough scale, businesses go out of business. The result? Shopping malls that look like ghost towns. So this is the fallacy of composition. It's the... the the paradox that what is a good thing for you or me individually, if we all do more of it at the same time, it's going to be a disaster for the economy. Let's take another look at some other examples of this paradox. Remember the paradox. What's true for one person isn't necessarily true for all of us at the same time. For example, if you go to a basketball game, you stand up, you can see better. Everybody knows that, but what happens if everybody stands up at the same time? Nobody can see any better. What's true for one isn't true for all of us at the same time. Another example in economics that we cite frequently about the, the paradox of macro or, or, if you like, the fallacy of composition has to do with Behavior in the past, many hundreds of years ago, in England, for example, it was common to designate a part of the local village as a common area where everyone was invited to graze their sheep. So the thinking was, if I could graze my sheep on city land for free, then that wouldn't cost me any money. And so I could raise my sheep more cheaply. And so life would be better. Ha! Huh. But what happens when everyone starts grazing their sheep on the common lands? If everybody grazes sheep on the common lands, what happens to it? There is no common land. It is destroyed. 
and everybody is better off. Again, what was good for the individual shepherd is not going to be good for the industry of shepherds, if you will, for all shepherds at the same time. This is the paradox of macroeconomics. Here's one more example, and it may be a little controversial for some folks, but I've used it in the past. Let's talk about concealed carry weapons and the impact of allowing everyone who is licensed to carry a concealed weapon. The individual thinking about the situations may conclude, if I can carry my gun with me, I will be safer. And, you know, if everything else remained constant, you can certainly make that argument. And so some folks choose to carry a concealed weapon on that basis. But if you make concealed weapons more available to everyone, including people who are poorly trained, people who are un under some sort of emotional stress or perhaps uh, suffering from some emotional disability, if you will, if you have more people like that carrying guns, are you really safer? Again, this may be controversial to some of you, but think about it. Understand the logic behind the argument, even if you may disagree with it. And that concludes the paradox of macroeconomics. We want to be aware of this anytime we're talking about macroeconomic policies and we ought to do that or we ought not to allow this, etc. Okay.